Hi guys, I am Sangeeta Krishnan and I would like to welcome you on behalf of Jagran Josh to our newest feature which is the video series. So basically we would be bringing to you a new video each week that would cover a trending topic that is in much debate and discussion. So the topic that we are going to cover today is the demand of statehood for Gorkha land. As you all must be reading in the newspapers or looking at the channels that there is an ongoing agitation in the Darjeeling region that calls for the creation of a state called Gorkha land. Before we go into the current situation, let us look at its history for a bit. So this demand did not come up right now or a month back or in fact a year. It is almost a century old. In 1907, the Hillsmen Association, they called for a creation of a separate administrative unit in the Darjeeling area. So first of all, we need to understand that the people living in this area predominantly belong to Nepal and the region itself in fact was a part of Sikkim before the Britishers annexed it in the late 19th century. It was the Britishers who made it a part of the West Bengal under the Absorbed Area Act of 1953. So the term Gorkha land, which is in much debate right now, was actually coined by Subhash Ghe Singh in 1980s who called for the creation of a state called Gorkha land from the hilly region of Darjeeling. But the movement turned very violent and it led to the death of over 2000 people. So the West Bengal government at that time to take control of the situation, they paved way for the creation of the Darjeeling Gorkha Hill Council in 1988. So this council uh, had semi-autonomous powers. They were given the responsibility of administering certain areas in Darjeeling. So this kind of subdued the protests for some years. But in 2007, a new party called Gorkha Jan Mukti Mocha brought up the agitation again. In July 2011, a memorandum of agreement was signed between the leaders of this party and the state government for the creation of Gorkha Land Territorial Administration. While for Gorkha leaders, this step was one step towards the creation of a new state. For Bengal government, it was merely to put an end to the movement. But the movement picked up again in July 2013 when the Congress passed a resolution recommending the formation of Telangana from Andhra Pradesh. Coming back to the current situation, in June 2017, the Bengal government passed a law making Bengali mandatory in all schools of the state. This move was viewed as an imposition of an alien culture by the people of the region as they predominantly speak Nepali. So with the urge of preserving their identity, culture and language, fresh protests were launched demanding for complete autonomy. So before examining whether or not Gorkha land is legitimate or not, let us look at the points that favour its making and the points that oppose it. Those who oppose the making of Gorkha land say, firstly, that it is too small a region to be given statehood. Secondly, West Bengal as a state has been divided twice in the past. First in 1905 and second in 1947, which led to large scale displacement of people and communal strife. So it is very difficult for the state to go through yet another partition. The third and the most important point is the economic feasibility of the decision. The region, according to many, lacks the potential of revenue generation. Coming to the points that favour the making of Gorkha land, first of all, we need to go back to what the state's reorganisation committee said in the 1960s, which is that a state can be carved out on basis of language and culture. In fact, if we look back at the past states that were formed, like Andhra Pradesh from Madras or Gujarat from Maharashtra or Jharkhand from Bihar and in fact Telangana from Andhra Pradesh all those states were formed and were given permission so why not Gorkha land? Clearly the people of this region share a very different culture, identity and language from the rest of the Bengal still the legitimacy of this decision has to be taken by the centre, the state and the people of Gorkha land. So we will have to wait and see if this statehood does indeed go through or not. So with this, I conclude my topic for the day. We will be back next week with a new topic. Till then, like, comment and share this video. And log on to jagranjosh.com for more current affairs. Thank you. Senior Bureaucrat, Aparna Appointed Executive Director at World Bank. Rajiv Kumar succeeds Panagaria as new vice chairman of Niti Ayog. NASA's Hubble detects exoplanet with glowing water atmosphere. India's first private missile production facility unveiled in Hyderabad. 
ISRO NASA working towards completion of Nisar mission by 2021. Venkaiah Naidu elected as next Vice President of India. Lok Sabha passes NABAD Amendment Bill 2017. Lok Sabha passes Banking Regulation Amendment Bill for resolution of non-performing assets. Book Tatkal train tickets now and pay later, Indian Railways. Maharashtra government launches online portals, MahaDBT, Mahavastu. Senior bureaucrat Apanna appointed executive director at World Bank. Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani's principal secretary, S. Aparna, a senior IAS officer, has been appointed as the executive director at the World Bank in the United States. The 1988 batch IAS officer has been appointed to represent four nations, India, Bhutan, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, at the prestigious international body for a period of three years. Rajiv Kumar succeeds Panagaria as the new vice chairman of Niti Aayog. The union government has appointed noted economist Rajiv Kumar as the new vice chairman of Niti Aayog. Kumar would be succeeding Arvind Panagaria, who recently announced his resignation in order to return to the field of academics. Kumar, a senior fellow in the Center for Policy Research, a public policy think tank, has authored several books on the Indian economy and India's national security. NASA's Hubble detects exoplanet with glowing water atmosphere. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has discovered the strongest evidence to date for a stratosphere on a planet outside our solar system, WASP-121b. The discovery has made by an international team of researchers led by the University of Exeter by observing glowing water molecules in WASP-121b's atmosphere. Mark Marley, co-author of the study, described the result as exciting, as the discovery shows that a common trait of most of the atmosphere in our solar system, which is a warm stratosphere, can also be found in the atmospheres of exoplanets. India's first private missile production facility unveiled in Hyderabad. India's first private sector missile subsystems manufacturing facility, Kalyani Rafale Advanced Systems Plant, was inaugurated near Hyderabad on 3rd August 2017. The facility is a joint venture between India's Kalyani Group and Israel's Rafale Advanced Defence System Limited. It has been established in line with the Union Government's Make in India initiative and the policy to encourage private sector participation in defence production. ISRO NASA working towards completion of NISAR mission by 2021. ISRO is working along with NASA to co-develop and launch a dual-frequency synthetic aperture radar satellite in the NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar Mission 2021. The satellite will be the first radar imaging satellite to use dual frequency and it is planned to be used for remote sensing purposes to observe and understand natural processes of the Earth. In the joint mission, NASA JPL will be responsible for the design and development of L-band SAR and ISRO will be responsible for the design and development of S-band SAR. Venkaiya Naidu elected as next Vice President of India. Naidu, an NDA candidate, won the Vice Presidential election by defeating opposition candidate Gopal Krishna Gandhi. Naidu, who received 516 votes of total 771 votes, defeated Gandhi by 272 votes. With this election, Naidu will serve India as the 13th Vice President in person of the country and 15th overall. Lok Sabha passes NABAD Amendment Bill 2017. The bill passed on 3rd August 2017 enables exit of the Reserve Bank of India from the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. It also increases authorized capital of the development institution six times to rupees 30,000 crore. The bill also seeks to amend certain clauses in the light of reference of the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Act 2006 in the proposed legislation. 
Lok Sabha passes banking regulation bill for resolution of non-performing assets. The Banking Regulation Bill 2017 seeks to amend the Banking Regulation Act 1949. It also seeks to replace the Banking Regulation Ordinance 2017, which was promulgated on 4 May 2017. The bill empowers RBI to issue directions to the banking companies to resolve specific stressed assets by initiating the recently enacted Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Book Tatkal train tickets now and pay later, Indian Railways. Indian Railways has announced that people can now pay later for tickets booked under the Tatkal quota on the IRCTC website. The book now and pay later mode enables customers to book Tatkal e-ticket and pay the fare within a period of 15 days. While booking an e-ticket, the customer will be provided with an e-pay later scheme and a service charge of 3.5% will be levied on the transaction along with other taxes. Maharashtra government launches online portals MahaDVT, Mahavastu. The two online portals were launched to streamline the process of direct benefit transfer. It seeks to bring more transparency in construction sector and to provide direct benefits with Aadhaar authentication. MahaDBT is an Aadhaar authenticated electronic mechanism and will enable direct transfer of benefits for over 40 schemes implemented by state's various departments.